and welcome to part one of a two-part program dedicated to virtual pipe organs using the Hauptwerk software. This program is presented by the Portland, Oregon chapter of the American Guild of Organists. My name is Matt Smith, chapter webmaster and publicity chair. The music you just heard during the title sequence is, of course, the start of the Toccata in D minor by Butch Tehuda, played and recorded on a virtual pipe organ located in my basement, utilizing digital samples of the parish church organ in Strasbourg, Austria, built in 1743. We will hear some additional examples later in the program. Now, I am pleased to introduce chapter member Annette Upton, who will provide an overview of the Hauptwerk software, the equipment needed, and an overview of the process she followed to set up her system. Then, I will show how I constructed my own system with repurposed computers, keyboards, pedal board, and a used bench to construct my own Hauptwerk organ. Part two of the program will highlight Lou Paff and Eric Simmons' Hauptwerk organs. Parts one and two include examples and demonstrations of the organs available on each of the systems. I'd like to thank our chapter dean, Walter Kruger, and sub-dean, Susan Werner Reiser, for supporting and helping with the development of this program. I hope you enjoy it. And now, without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Annette. Hello, I'm Annette Upton, and I am here to speak today a little bit about Hopwork organs and how uh, they work and how one might go about uh, creating one. So our agenda today uh, will pretty much follow those topics. First of all, um, I will explain exactly what a virtual pipe organ is, of which Hopper is one of the available options. Uh, I will discuss a little bit about how a virtual pipe organ works, uh, and then we'll spend most of our time diving kind of into uh, some of the options available for actually building a virtual pipe organ. Traditionally, uh, there are two types of organs available. There are the wonderful uh, grand cathedral or, uh, pipe organs um, that cost millions and millions of dollars to build and maintain and uh, you know, are absolutely irreplaceable. Um, on the other end of the spectrum then are the newer electronic organs um, that are generally uh, much more affordable. <laughs> Um, but often don't uh, create nearly as a wonderful a sound um, as, as large pipe organs do in large spaces. Um, the virtual pipe organ then, the idea is to try to gain the best of both worlds. Um, to have spectacular sound and even uh, variable reverb modeling potentially um, for the price of sort of a home electronic type model. Great, so how do we do this? Well, at its core, a virtual pipe organ, as its name sort of uh, indicates, is a computer. Uh, it's a computer then that runs some specific software. Uh, in the case that we're gonna discuss today, Hopwork, uh, virtual pipe organ software, as well as some sample sets, which we will discuss uh, in more detail later. Um, we will then connect uh, keyboards, manuals to that computer. We will also connect uh, pedal board, um, swell shoes, etc., to uh, that computer. And then we will also connect um, some sort of audio output system, speakers, headphones, uh, that sort of thing. Um, and then lastly, we're going to need some sort of platform uh, on which to set all these things and, and make it into um, an organ that you can play. Um, for the virtual pipe organ uh, enthusiast, someone who wants to potentially build one of these for themselves, uh, my general advice is to always buy the biggest, best uh, of any component you can. Um, as allowed by your, your budget. Uh, there are a couple of reasons for this. Number one, uh, you're in general, especially for physical uh, uh, components, you're gonna get what you pay for. Um, so buying quality will allow that piece to last um, instead of constantly needing to replace a single piece, you can actually build up other components. Uh, the other, um, for more the electronic type component side is that 
you just never know when some new software or component or or anything will come down will will be invented created um, that's just a real game cha game changer um, but requires all of the processing capabilities for instance that your computer uh, is has available okay so kind of thinking back to those pieces that we showed a few slides back um, here's how one might go about building um, a hot work computer First of all, obviously you need the computer. Um, uh, and there's always this fundamental decision to make between going with Apple versus a PC. Um, this choice comes very much down to your personal situation and preferences. Uh, for roughly equivalent compute capabilities, the Apple will almost always cost more than the PC will. Uh, the PC also offers the potential for piecewise upgrades. You can upgrade, you know, you can add memory here, this and that, whereas usually with Apple that's very difficult, if, po if at all possible, to do. The flip side of that, though, is if you are not particularly uh, enamored with computers or skilled, experienced with them, uh, the beauty of the Apple is it will typically just work out of the box for you and with little maintenance, little... Uh, tinkering required on your uh, part. Now the one thing about audio processing is it doesn't require a particularly spectacular processor. What, so when I say small compute resources, that's what I'm talking about, that, that the processor itself doesn't have to be uh, a real killer. Uh, what you do care about though for this particular application is to have plenty of memory uh, plenty of hard disk and plenty of backup space available. Uh, you'll probably want some sort of touchscreen monitors, um, or there are some other types of stop jam, stop rail type solutions out there. Um, I did not spend a lot of time researching uh, other uh, solutions. I'll explain why in just a moment. Um, and this last item, the audio interface, kind of feeds back actually into your Apple versus PC decision. Uh, one of the things about the Apple solution is that unless you're going to create a very high and surround sound type uh, audio output setup, uh, the Apple audio capabilities will probably suffice. Whereas you're almost certainly going to need to purchase an audio interface to put into the system in any case when you uh, go with the PC solution. Uh, so again, you know, the money versus know-how versus what, how, how close to the hardware you want to be and how many change, tweaks and changes you may want to make uh, really starts to figure into these decisions. Uh, so my Hopwork organ, Opus One, uh, I built so my professional background is in computer engineering. So this is a place where I could trade off some of my knowledge for uh, not spending quite so much money. I did build a custom uh, computer of my own. Um, it's an Intel i5 processor uh, with 64 gigabytes of RAM. I did max out the motherboard and bought the best motherboard I could find on the market that day, that, at that time completely maxed out its memory capabilities. Uh, I put a one terabyte solid state disk drive in it. I chose solid state disk drive because I wanted the reliable, very high reliability and very high access times, which solid state disks provide. Uh, I also chose a two terabyte external portable uh, backup drive. Uh, something I never thought I would actually need to do, but there was a sh brief window of time in the fall when the fires were starting to threaten, and I did actually consider, you know, ripping my drive off and, and evacuating. So it was for real, once in my life. Uh, let's see. Uh, I, as I said, I did choose two Dell S2240T uh, 21.5 inch touchscreen monitors. I knew uh, early on that I would almost certainly buy multiple sample sets 
and I wanted the flexibility and the ease of use of, in switching from one sample set to the next that the touch screen monitors would provide. So I really did not spend much time. There are other options for your stop jams, but I am not particularly knowledgeable about those. I did not spend a lot of time doing research in this particular area. And because I did uh, go with the PC uh, solution, of course, I also added a Roland OctaCapture USB audio interface. Thank you, Annette. Let's take a quick break from Hauptwerk 101 and hear another sample. This time, we'll listen to a quick snippet using the 1907 Brindley and Foster organ in St. Anne's Church in Birmingham, England. This organ is free and comes with a Hauptwerk software. <laughs> So we've got the computer built. Now we've got to put some software on it. Uh, for the virtual private, excuse me, virtual pipe organ software, uh, the two most well-known ones, I believe, out there are the hopper, which I am, have used and am most familiar with. There's also Grand Org available. And I've actually started hearing about a couple of others, uh, newer. Um, I know very little about them at this point. Hoptwork is commercially available. Uh, you do either pay for a license or subscribe uh, to the software. Grand Org, on the other hand, is open source software, which means that many, many people contribute uh, to the coding um, and maintenance of this software, and then it is redistributed for free. Now, I realize I said a few minutes ago that for the physical components, uh, by and large, you're going to get what you pay for. That is not necessarily the case for uh, software components. Uh, it is often the case that that open source software is at least as high quality and sometimes in some cases higher quality than uh, commercially available counterparts. I have not spent any time working with Grand Org yet. Um, it's one of those things that's just kind of a ways out there on my to-do list, um, but I do intend to at some point. In addition to the Hopwork software, then you also need to choose sample sets. Um, and as their name implies, these literally are people that have taken microphones to, in many cases, world-class organs and have spent hours and hours and hours, usually late at night when the building is empty, uh, sampling the sounds that the organ makes. Uh, every stop, every rank, every key, every everything um, sampled one at a time and then uh, packaged into a sample set for purchase that you can, you know, import into your Hopwork or your Grand Org and then you're essentially playing that organ. A couple of, again, decision points that you should be aware of when shopping for sample sets. Uh, first is the concept of wet versus dry sample sets. Uh, a wet sample set is typically one that has been sampled from out in the room. Uh, usually you're gonna get the natural reverb of the venue in which the organ resides whereas dry sample sets are taken very near to the pipes, possibly even in the pipe chamber. You know, why in the world would anybody do 
a dry sample set. Um, well, one great example, um, the First Congregational Church of Los Angeles, the organ is, is made of actually several organs, um, physically spaced in, in multiple locations uh, in the building, um, though they can all be played from a single console. The only way to get any sort of consistency uh, in sound from those pipes spread out so, so far physically is to do a uh, full dry sample sum. Um, uh, Post-processing such as reverb modeling can be applied. Um, I've done that with my FCCLA uh, sample set and I've achieved actually very, very really successful uh, satisfactory results uh, because of the, the quality of the sampling and the quality of recent reverb technique. Uh, free versus paid. Again, don't necessarily assume that free sample sets are of lower quality. Um, they might be, they may not be. There are some free uh, sample sets out there that are of excellent quality um, and I highly recommend some of them. So uh, the sample sets that you want to use then uh, drive in large measure um, the amount of memory, the amount of disk space, and the amount of backup space you want to have. Uh, if you're going to, if you're planning on using large sample sets, the FCCLA for instance, a very large sample set, um, then you need large memory. That's why, in fact, that particular sample set is why I went with such a large memory. 64 gigabytes is a lot. Um, sort of in tandem with that though, for disk space and backup requirements, that's really a function of the number of sample sets that you plan to use. If you're building um, a completely custom organ to, to cater to a single sample set, you probably don't need a lot of disk or backup. It can be pretty small, um, just enough for that particular sample set. Uh, I knew early on that I was probably going to purchase multiple sample sets and switch between them frequently. Um, and so I, I, like I said, I knew I needed big disk and big backup requirements. So what sample sets do I have? Uh, <laughs> this is a growing list, uh, it changes frequently. Uh, first of all, I have the St. Anne's Mosley. Uh, it ships with the Hopwork, so you do have at least uh, a basic organ to begin with, regardless of, you know, what your, your budget's gonna be like from day one. There is an organ. Uh, the Strasbourg is a two manual Baroque organ. Uh, it is one of the free sample sets. Um, again, very high quality. I'm very happy with this sample set. It is a wet sample set, uh, as is the St. Anne's mostly actually. Um, though the St. Anne's is quite dry as a wet sample set goes. Um, the Strasbourg, however, uh, very wet, very beautiful, very high quality sample set. Uh, the Mount Carmel Skinner is also a uh, wet sample set, very high quality, um, a, a beautiful three manual American classic organ, also a favorite of mine. Um, the FCCLA sample set that I've mentioned uh, is a dry sample set, uh, it's five manuals, um, well known organ, well known very large organ. Uh, I have applied uh, both third party and uh, reverb built in to the Hopwork system with, with great success and, and created very beautiful sounds here in my little home studio with this sample set. Uh, the Redeemer Alien Skinner sample set is also a free one. It's not one of my favorites. Um, it's, it's a very utilitarian kind of sample set, um, but not, not my, one of my go-tos. Additionally, uh, many vendors will make demonstration sample sets available. Maybe uh, you're only allowed to use it for so many days or weeks, or uh, some of them chime every few minutes to remind you you're not using the real thing, or some of them, the sound will cut out uh, for a few seconds every few minutes, um, various things like that. But the idea is to let you download it, play with it a little bit, get to know it, and, and make a very informed decision whether or not you want to actually buy uh, the full sample set. 
Uh, keyboards, of course, you need manuals in order to build an organ. Um, and really, to the best of my knowledge, the only requirement for uh, manuals is that they speak MIDI. Um, they don't have to match. They don't have to be of any particular quality. Uh, certainly, I know of college students who are frantic for practice uh, instrument that, you know, pick one manual up at a garage sale and another one on sale at Target and hook them up and, okay, they've at least got two manuals to get started with. Um, uh, on the other end of the scale, you know, you can, you can buy high-end uh, MIDI keyboards uh, with lighted pistons with Fatar keyboards uh, built into them as I did in this case. Uh, my organ is a four manual and like I said, uh, very, pretty high-end keyboards uh, with lighted pistons. The pedal board, uh, similarly, as far as I know, the only requirement for it is that it speaks MIDI. Um, one very common way of, of being able to obtain pedal boards for less expensive pedal boards um, is to buy an old one that is not MIDI capable um, and then to buy a conversion kit, a MIDI conversion kit. Uh, the last I looked, those ran about $50. Um, so you can imagine saving a great deal of money over buying just a brand new pedal board for this organ. Uh, beware, swell shoes are often sold separately. So if you go that kind of route, <coughs> excuse me, make sure you know exactly what you're getting. Um, yeah, uh, I did actually buy a brand new classic AGO uh, standard MIDI pedal board, um, as well as three swell shoes from them, which was the maximum that their uh, hardware will support. Now that you've got uh, this computer and this pedal board and these great manuals that you're going to input all of this uh, wonderful playing into your computer, obviously you need some way to hear what that sounds like. Um, so you will need some sort of audio system. Uh, the general consensus seems to be powered studio monitors, monitors is the way to go in terms of speakers. Uh, I do strongly recommend at least one subwoofer. Keep in mind that 32 foot pedal, uh, excuse me, 32 foot pipes uh, run down to about 16 hertz uh, for, for sound, uh, which not all subwoofers do. Uh, many stop in the high 20s. Um, so you do need to watch that when you uh, choose your purchase. Make sure uh, you, get, you get down around that 16 hertz mark. Um, a great way, again, to potentially cut down on what you spend for an initial audio system is to just go with a good pair of studio headphones. Hmm. Uh, for my system, I have four KRK Rocket 5 monitors. Um, these Rocket 5, these, the Rocket monitor lineup, um, there's multiple generations of them, uh, does seem to be fairly popular um, among Hopper users. Uh, I've been very happy with them so far. I also have a Yamaha 8-inch powered subwoofer. My subwoofer uh, ranges down to 22 hertz. I cannot hear anything below about 20. So uh, I figured 22 was a good kind of price point versus what my hearing, what would matter to my hearing uh, trade-off. Um, I do tend to practice at very odd hours and I live in a townhome. So I did go ahead <laughs> and add a very high quality pair of Sony Professional wired headphones. Uh, conventional wisdom is that wireless headphones, there's still too much delay that you will notice uh, the difference between when you play and when you hear the sound. Um, again, I just took the conventional wisdom and didn't really spend much time researching that. Of course, you will need some place to put all of this. Um, and literally, by something to put the manual stack on, I mean something. Um, again, for the college student who is desperate for a practice instrument, uh, that can be you know, a folding table from, from the local uh, box store, uh, all the way up to something custom built for the organ application. 
uh, here again, this would be a great place uh, if woodworking is uh, something that you do, something, a skill that you have could be potentially a great way to trade off some of your knowledge um, and time uh, to save some money if necessary. Um, I bought from Classic uh, MIDI Works uh, one of their consoles, their oak console table uh, with 16 chrome toe stud kit that uh, could then integrate into the table. Um, and I also happen to uh, have on hand a previous purchase, a Rogers uh, adjustable bench, uh, organ bench that was a prototype from, from many years ago um, when, when they were sort of developing their adjustable benches. Let's take another break and listen to another demo from the Strasbourg organ. This organ was sampled by Piotr Grabowski, a sound engineer in Poland. This Baroque church is dedicated to St. Nikolaus and dates back to the 15th century, and it has a very nice resonant acoustic. So how and when did my build come together? Uh, in about February of 2018, um, I decided this was the time I was gonna get started and that's when I bought my computer components and built it. Um, at that point, I actually connected it to uh, my previous organ, which was a two manual electronic. Um, and so for a while I played the electronic organ, but used the MIDI interface to, uh, it was actually playing the Hoptwerk software instead of the built-in organ software. Uh, about a month later, uh, I then bought my audio interface, my speakers and subwoofer. Again, I then connected those to the electronic organ. And so now, you know, basically the only thing at that point I was using the electronic organ for was the keyboard and pedals. Um, but everything else was, was my Hoptwerk setup. Uh, in April, I finally decided that I was ready to take the big plunge. I sold my electronic organ uh, so I would have the, the financial resources uh, to buy uh, the big console kit from Classic MIDI Works. Um, the delivery of that kit was delayed several times and so it wasn't until June of that year uh, that the kit arrived. Um, so the build of the desk um, and kind of putting it all together. There were four of us. Uh, we had two cordless drills that we kept mostly busy. Uh, there were a couple of times when we looked around and thought, oh, if we had a third, it would have been great. Um, but uh, with those resources, we were able to do most of the build in about six hours. Now I should mention that one of those people had built uh, one of these console kits previously. So we weren't really heavily reliant on the instructions. Um, they, they, they were a reference. Mostly this person was giving us directions and kind of keeping us all busy. Um, then, you know, uh, like any do-it-yourself project, it's gonna take a while before you really get every single detail nailed down. I would say it took a good month, maybe, maybe two, to really feel like uh, it was finished. 
So there's a picture of the kit arriving. <laughs> uh, it does come, rolls off a great big box truck on a pallet and uh, you do need some garage space or, or patio uh, space for it to roll off of. Uh, the bottom box is the pedal board. Uh, the middle box that you can see, it contains most of the desk parts uh, and yeah, the big heavy wooden parts. And then the two boxes on top are mostly the, the more electronic kind of stuff, the keyboards, um, uh, yeah, the, the connectors, those kind of things. Um, the, the toe stud kit, the swell shoes, all of kind of the smaller stuff. And there's what my uh, hop work organ looks like today. Um, that the sample set that is up on the monitors right in this picture are, is in fact the FCCLA sample set. Uh, so assuming that you are interested in learning more, um, here are a few resources, a few places to hopefully get you started. Uh, first, for, excuse me, first of all, uh, Hopwork itself. Um, the, the key place to definitely look at is the Hopwork website. Uh, that's where you can buy. That's where uh, they, the user forums are maintained. Um, so uh, a big source for question and answers, uh, definitely on those, those, those forums. Uh, there is a Facebook, Facebook group. Um, You'll see everything discussed, everything having to do with Hopper virtual organs. Um, people often chronicle uh, the progress of their builds. Um, you'll see, you know, these college students putting together <laughs> um, just just a couple of keyboards that they've scrounged from somewhere, all the way up to people doing the woodwork um, uh, for big, beautiful new setups. Um, even though books do get out of date, and this one is certainly the case, um, All About Hopwork by Kenneth A. Spencer is a very good resource. Uh, it will give you, um, it'll talk about everything I've talked about here um, in a little bit more detail, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more technicality, technical level. Um, also for those who, who might consider uh, doing the woodwork to build their own desk. He includes um, a, some plans for a desk in the book. Uh, if you're interested in giving Grand Org a try, um, the, the Source Forge Home for Grand Org is definitely the place to start there. Uh, sample sets. Sample sets come from many different vendors. Um, I personally recommend this PCOrgan.com website as a place to sort of get yourself uh, to build the intuition up for what's available out there. Um, this is a third party website that has tried to survey the sample sets available. I don't know that it's necessarily up to date, but like I said, what its real value is that you'll start to understand uh, where the vendors are and where their websites are and what each one of them uh, has available. So then you'll, you'll find your favorites as if as in any type of shopping right um and then there's actual uh hopwork sort of kit the organ kit type vendors um some of these vendors will build the the computer for you will will give you a complete package um many of them will provide you with whatever uh components you choose uh so arnold organs um uh, Verdian organs. I did, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I bought from Classic MIDI Works. Unfortunately, I cannot uh, recommend them terribly highly. Um, I mentioned their delays in production. Uh, their customer service is not the best. Um, and by the way, they know. I mean, I've, I've spoken with them. I have told them very bluntly that I will not be able to recommend them very highly. If I was to do this over again, I would very definitely talk to Arnold Organs um, and, and at least start my research there. Uh, so with that, um, I do hope you find success and joy uh, in building your Hopwork system. Uh, and thanks so much. Now that we've reviewed the requirements of Hopwork and the equipment needed 
and an overview of a net system, I'd like to provide a very quick description of my own system, including a look at how to hook up an old pedal board using a MIDI conversion kit. I have a Dell Optiplex desktop computer, which I purchased, used, and refurbished. It has 500 gigabytes of memory on the hard disk, and it came with 16 gigabytes of RAM, or random access memory, which I expanded to 32 gigabytes. Help work requires a lot of RAM because it loads the entire organ into memory when the program is started and you open one of the organ sample sets that you've downloaded. Here you see the organ that comes with the program, the St. Anne's Mosley organ. It's a modest two manual and pedal uh, instrument, but as you'll see in a few minutes, it does sound quite nice. I have two keyboards set up. One is a digital keyboard, a Yamaha that I already had in the house that I bought a few years ago for my kids. And it has a USB MIDI interface. And then I purchased this MIDI controller, another 61 note keyboard for less than $100 on Amazon. I chose the Yamaha keyboard for the Swell because it has a built-in music stand. And then you can see I just built a little stand for it out of some spare plywood that I had laying around. Here is the pedal board. It's a 32 note Allen pedal board. Notice that the pedal board doesn't have any of the original wiring, but it does have the magnets on the backs of the keys. I purchased a switching system from Classic MIDI Works which is a Canadian company, which, per, which produces this scanner board, which is attached to 32 different switches. These are reed switches, which have a switch on it that detects the magnetic field from the pedal keys. And the next step will be to attach this pedal, these pedal switches to a board that I can then screw into the back of the pedal board. It also comes with a uh, switches that you can attach optionally to a swell pedal if you want to. To attach the scanner board to your computer, you'll need something like this. It's a five pin MIDI cable that has a USB output that you can plug into the computer. One mistake that I made that took me quite a long time to figure out is that the scanner board is labeled MIDI in and MIDI out. And I simply matched the MIDI out and MIDI in cables to these ports. However, the MIDI output on the scanner board goes into the input cable on the MIDI USB interface. I purchased this bench from Bond Organ, courtesy of Joe O'Donnell. This bench is a little short for me, so I have it propped up on a couple of spare uh, two by fours that I had in the garage. Right now for sound, I have a pair of headphones and I have a pair of very cheap computer speakers, which I will be upgrading very soon. Okay, we have mounted the reed switches to a board and they're ready to be tested on the magnets on the pedal board. This is a program called MIDI Aux, which I can use to test the switches for the pedal board. And when I put the magnet in front of the keys, it shows that the note is going on and off as the key switch becomes in proximity to the magnetic field. Okay, it looks like we're all set. Let's see if we can make some music. If you are interested in pursuing your own Hauptwerk system, our longtime chapter member Barbara Jones is offering a Baldwin console which could potentially be configured to run Hauptwerk. Thank you for watching our program today. To conclude, I'd like to provide two more demonstrations of the Strasbourg and St. Anne organs. Thank you to Piotr Grabowski for permission to use the photo of the organ case, and thanks to Liz Almy for permission to use the photos of Blue Cloud Abbey. 
And please plan to attend our next program coming in February, in which Lou Paff and Eric Simmons will showcase and demonstrate their own impressive Hauptwerk systems. Thank mm -hmm. you.